they're very clear that they do support their entitlement not to cover their faces. And again, thinking of my Pakistani context, the issue of the, the headscarf in France and the fact that you are not allowed to wear it into, in public schools, it was hugely important to them. They talked about it all the time and they held demonstrations with their faces covered, of course, outside the French embassy. And in, the, in all discussions about Islam and the West, it was very high on their agenda. But they supported the right of their party, which was in power in one of the provinces, to insist that women in government jobs did have to cover their hair. They did support their, their entitlement to be telling other women in Pakistan how they had to dress. So their definition of choice was only running one way. But I don't feel that I'm entitled to be demanding reciprocity when standing up for choice. I think that's an absolute value. And as long as they are not actively um, interfering in the lives of other women, then that's all that I can demand of them. And I can demand, perhaps, well, certainly demand that they should allow other women the same choice. But I can't respond to that by taking away their choice. My response to that has to be to do with that argument. I can't extend that into saying, well, if you're not letting me choose, or if you're not letting women in Iran choose, or women in the northwest frontier of Pakistan choose, well, I'm taking away your choice too. And it makes it more difficult to have discussions about women's right not to have to cover when the flip side of that is always, well, you know, the government in France feels perfectly entitled to tell us that we can't wear headscarves in certain public spaces. If they're allowed to tell us that we can't cover, then we're absolutely allowed to lay down the rules in our societies and tell women that they do have to cover. So it kind of undermines discussions about women's entitlements in Muslim-majority countries when Muslims claim that free expression of their religious norms is not permitted in our societies. So I'd finish off by saying, <laughs> since it's you know, the French context that's really kicked off this round of discussion, I'll paraphrase, not Voltaire, but I'll paraphrase somebody who apparently put words in Voltaire's mouth, and I'm assured that Voltaire never said that he'd support, that he would support, that he, sorry, he might not agree with what you said, but he'd support to the death your right to say it. I might not agree with what you choose to put on, but I'll support to the death your right to put it on. And I won't particularly expect you to support my rights to the death in return. to move the chairs and sit uh, panel style, I think, along here, so... Uh, but Virginia, I'd just like to start with you as the first speaker. I was very struck by uh, the fact your photos and your talk, clearly, but please correct me if I'm wrong here, that the impetus for this, uh, for your position here was your visit to Pakistan. So the, the question, uh, and yet the debate we've been having is whether we should ban it in Australia. And as Shakira has pointed out, uh, you know, we're, we're switching contexts. But my question is, um, your idea of banning it, would that extend, are you speaking just in an Australian context, or would you, were you able to have, you know, would, would you also be calling for a worldwide ban? I just wanted to, to ascertain that. Okay, look, great question. Firstly, I didn't go to Pakistan. Uh, I visited Afghanistan. Sorry, but no, my that's right. Yeah, my sorry. my uh, first confrontation with the burqa, the niqab, the chadar, the, uh, um, the abaya was back in '91 when I first visited um, Malaysia uh, and spent some time working in Trangano. And as those who are from Malaysia would know, that's a, 
a very Islamic state and a lot of the women fully cover, although they do show their face. My next um, experience was in Iraq and my recent experience in Afghanistan. But my issue with the burqa, the coverage of face, has been a long-held view. Um, <clears throat> my visit to Afghanistan uh, had nothing to do with my interest in the burqa. Um, my research there was on another issue. But uh, naturally, it was something that, um, that uh, influenced me, not only because I, I put it on myself at one stage, but oh, I wore a veil the whole time I was there, only when I was out in public, when I was indoors. I was uh, the only woman among the women I was with who didn't veil, um, which was very interesting because I, I was working with a number of orphans and I had a number of the girls say to me a number of times, why don't you veil? I think I was probably the first woman they have ever seen who has um, shown her hair uh, and not, not worn a veil. Now, in answer to your question, am I looking at a, a worldwide ban or an Australia ban? Very much an Australia ban. I don't care what the rest of the world does. That's up for them. That's up for the United States. It's up for Sarkozy and, and the French. The Turkish, uh, we know, have a very strong view on this. The hijab is not allowed in universities and public offices. Uh, we know that it is mandatory in Iran to, to wear a head veil. It is up to each state, each nation, to decide this for themselves. In Australia, I think we need to take a position on this because I think it's a very important issue. And I think it very much in, uh, it confronts us, uh, the, the very values that I've talked about, particularly in relation to women, equality and freedom. So what I'm talking about is a call for Australia to ban this as a message. If the rest of the world wants to hear that message, fine, good. But this is for Australia to say, you know, we don't accept this in our country. We do not accept women covering themselves and concealing themselves and covering their face and eyes in public because it is not necessary in our country. It is not necessary in our country. This is a country that is a liberal democracy. So in answer to your question, Australia. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the next one. That's so clear. Thanks.